it leaves. Uh, 50 grams of carbon disulfide can be broken down into 42.1 grams of sulfur and 7.9 grams of carbon. Is carbon disulfide made of atoms or molecules? Molecule. And how can you tell? Because it's made of two different things. Yes, it's made of two different things. So carbon is an atom, sulfur is an atom. When they come together to form a molecule, that's carbon disulfide. If you can break it down, then it's molecules. If it's just one thing that's on the periodic table, then it's an element. It's just made of one type of atom. So you can break that down into different stuff. It's molecules. Okay, Ava. Uh, if you put iron near a magnet, the iron will be attracted to the magnet. Rust is made up of molecules that contain iron and oxygen and hydrogen. Rust is not attracted to a magnet. If rust contains iron atoms and iron is attracted to a magnet, why isn't rust attracted to a magnet? The iron right. So when it forms a molecule with other elements, then what happens? Does it behave the same way the iron behaves? No. When certain things join together in a compound, they change their properties. So iron behaves one way, but iron bonded to other types of atoms behaves a completely different way. So. Make sure that you really have that down. That's a test question, I think, or something very similar. That things, it, ad, uh, atoms in a compound behave differently than those atoms that are not part of a compound just by themselves. They have different properties. One might be magnetic, one might not. One might uh, conduct electricity, and one might not. Uh, one might be black, and the other might be red once it forms a compound. They change their properties completely. Uh, okay. Uh, Patrick? Yes. Uh, yay. Um, a statue is made of copper and it's displayed outside. After many years, what color will it be? Shade of green. Some shade of green. And why does that happen? What color is copper supposed to be? Don't. Anyone? Copper? It's sort of like a goldish brown. Okay. Copper colored, says Clay. Uh, goldish brown, like a penny. Co um, pennies are all either made of copper or coated in copper, so the color of copper is like the outside of a nice, shiny, clean penny. But do pennies stay nice, shiny, and clean? No. Um, and that's because they react with chemicals in the air and form um, other compounds, and those compounds have completely different properties than the copper. So, for example, a different color from coppery colored, penny colored to green. Um, okay, we're on number five, and Chris? Yeah. Okay, have scientists actually seen atoms? No. Um, so, why do we teach you guys about atoms, and why does everyone really believe that they're atoms if we haven't seen them? Because... Going to two molecules, right? Mm, it's big molecules. Sometimes you can get a good image of them. The way that they actually image things that are very, very tiny, though, is they image them trying to use like the way that light or other substances bounce off of them. So you're not actually, like when you take a photograph, you're photographing the real thing. When you're imaging something, you're creating a map of it. So it's very different than a real photograph. So even though you can image something, it's not really seeing it, it's seeing ways that it interacts with other things. That's really complicated. I, it's hard to kind of make that general, but it, even when you image something, you're just seeing the way it interacts with light or whatever you're trying to bounce off of it. And so you're not actually seeing it. But mathematically, there's theories that give us very good evidence for the existence of atoms. Um, all of the theories that we have don't have any 
type of physics or chemistry experiment that contradicts the existence of atoms. And even though we keep building on uh, the theory, we have not yet found any reason to doubt that there are atoms. So I absolutely feel confident teaching you guys that matter is made out of atoms. <laughs> like, I, that's, that's a, a pretty done deal, but we have not technically seen them. And so, you know, there could be a way that they would find that there's some other theory that explains how things work, but I don't think that that's going to happen. I think atoms are pretty solid. Um, but science is done by humans, and humans can make mistakes. I think that's kind of the general idea of what he's getting at in that question. Okay, Duchesne, number six says, give the numerical meaning for centa, millet, and kilo. So centa means 100, millet means 1,000, and kilo means 1,000. So centa means, how many again? 100. 100, which you can express this way or that way. And what are the other two? No. Clay, can you actually see that? Yes. Am I writing big enough? Thank you, Lou. 1,000. Okay. So, um, I think there is actually a test question asking you something just like that for one of those. Um, so, it's a good thing to know. Um, Bethany, if you wanted to measure an object's mass, what metric unit would you use? Um, for the metric, it would be grams. And for English? Um, it would be either slugs or pounds. Well, no, and I'm glad you said that because that is a key um, In English units, for mass, you can only use slugs. Uh, pounds is actually a weight unit, and weight and mass are different. Weight is an interaction between you and gravity, your mass and gravity. And mass is just how much stuff you're made of. So um, for English units, if you want to talk about mass, it has to be slugs. It can't be pounds. Um, if we're talking about mass, it has to be grams for um, for metric and slugs for English. What if we're talking about weight? What would the metric unit of weight be? Does anyone know? Tushane? Newton. Newtons. And how about uh, English for weight? Pounds. Pounds. So weight and mass are different. Mass is just how much stuff you're made of does not change, whether you're on Earth, on the moon, anywhere, unless you lose a hair, cut off a limb, or eat something. Uh, those would all change your mass, because that changes how much stuff you're made of. And um, your weight does change. If you're on the moon, your weight would be uh, affected by gravity, which is less on the moon than on Earth. So your weight would be less on the moon on Earth, but your mass would be exactly the same on both, and that's a test question for sure. Uh, number eight for Joseph says, if you want to measure an object's volume, what metric unit would you use? A liter. A milliliter, a liter. Um, what else could you use, do you know? Like milliliters and kilo, kilo, well, kilo kiloliters. Kiloliters. Mm -hmm. Decimeters. Right. What if I wanted to measure the volume of the room? Um, kiloliters. Maybe, yeah. Um, also, you can actually use cubic meters or cubic centimeters or whatever. Um, so, any of those would work, but usually you would use liters um, to measure uh, volume. But a cubed distance unit would be fine too. Um, and what English unit would you use for volume, Joseph? A gallon. Gallon, or what else? Ounces, pounds. Ounce would be fine, quart would be fine, or even foot cubed. <laughs> like, I mean, you hear people who are building stuff say, oh, I need 18 cubic feet of mulch or something. So uh, that's a volume also. Uh, max, right? No? Okay, good. Uh, if you want to use an object's length, what metric unit would you use? The meter. In English? Um, the foot. Okay. And Joshua, how many centimeters are in 1.3 meters? 130. Yes. 
So how would I get that using factor label? So in order to get the convert means the same meters, you gotta have 1.3 meters over one. Hold on, I started with the wrong thing. Okay. And then multiply it by um, one centimeter over um, 100. So is there one centimeter and 100 meters? No, there's 100 centimeters and one meter. So okay. I'm so sorry, you have to switch it. Yeah. Okay, so this would give us the ability to cancel meters because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. Then we end up with centimeters. So 1.3 times 100 gives us just what you said, 130 centimeters. Perfect. Is that our last? Oh, no, one more problem. Okay, so Ryan. If a person has a mass of 75 kilograms, what is the mass in grams? Um, 75,000 grams. And how would I do that? Um, you would have to do 75 kilograms and multiply it times 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram. Okay, because we know there's 1,000 grams in 1 kilogram. And that's something to note. I know sometimes people panic when they get to the test. And they say, well, if kilo means 1,000, I should put 1,000 to the kilogram. But that's not the case. What it means is there's 1,000 of this base unit in 1 kilogram. So 1,000 grams in 1 kilogram. I actually saw my own child panic on the test and totally mess it up right here because she was like, but I wrote in this one question that it means a thousand or it means one one hundredth or whatever. And then, it, you know, so just remember when it says kilo means one thousand, what that means is one thousand of these. <laughs> so, and then you said seventy-five thousand, of course, grams, because we cancel out. Now, notice every single answer needs to have a unit, gram, centimeter. If you don't have a unit, you'll get partly wrong on the test. So you must put a unit. So now we are going to do a lab activity, which um, might seem kind of funky. Um, but you know that in Bible times, uh, people measured a little differently in cubits, right? Um, or in fingers. So when you were building, oh, I already got it out. When you were building something, you... Um, you know, had to pick one guy whose arm was going to be the cubit by which you were building. Or the king would say, my arm is the cubit, but then when you get a new king, he's got a different length of arm, and so cubits change, right? And that was very inconvenient um, for keeping track of how big things are. So, we'll find just how absolutely inconvenient it would be to use cubits. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut a string from, and I want you to try to do it very carefully, from the tip of your middle finger, exactly the length of your middle finger, and then right at your elbow. You can even get someone to help you. Like there, it's right at my elbow. So, well, my finger is not very straight there, but maybe we'll pick someone who's smaller than me to use that string. So that would be my cubit, from the tip there to the tip there. And I'll just cut these a little bit too big. I should have cut these before. And pass them out. Or maybe, Clay, you can aim that camera at something and cut me some strings. So you feel free to cut yourself exactly one cubit. And then, if you have leftover string enough, uh, if your string is long, long enough, then you get to know. Uh, if you have leftover string, you're going to cut one finger, which is the measurement from this knuckle to that knuckle. So you might want to tape the ends of your string so they don't fray, and then you'll cut the length of one finger like that. So you'll have two things, one string that's a cubit long and one string that's a finger long. And everyone try to do it like as literally quickly as possible. Oh, you'll need some of those. And here's some tape. Maybe cut like a giant length of string and then I'll start around the other side with it so we can go fast. Wish they had scissors in the classrooms.
Play is a control service file system. Some of you guys might have way longer arms than I do. I got it. I got it. And then I need to pass out your lab sheets so you can. Thank you. Hopefully, you'll have enough access to get a finger out of it. If there are scissors laying around, pass it. And if you want to tape the ends and then cut your finger, I would. Please don't cut your finger. Like if they're starting to fray, you might want to tape the ends. Because you don't want to fray. Okay. So, passing out the lab sheet. Oh, was there anyone who was not at back to school night? No? All oh, good. Okay. I still have one sheet. I didn't know that things are going to Okay. So, when you get a paper, go ahead and put on your name and the person next to you. From the first and school right here to Yes, it should be your index finger. That's a good point. You don't want to keep using a different finger every time. Okay. So make a string that's one cubit long from elbow to middle finger tip, and then a string that's one finger long from knuckle to knuckle, essentially. And then tape your cubit string to the table. So share the tape around. Stretch out your cubit string and just tape it down so it doesn't move around. Yep. So it's nice and stretched tight and taped down. You'll pull it up again later and you want to be able to kind of see the ends of it. So don't use excessive tape. And try to keep your arm kind of straight when you. Oh, you're doing your fingers. Okay. And then, yeah, pass the tape. No, the tip isn't actually the end table. No, I have the wood tables in my other classroom, so that's really different. Oh. All right, finger. 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 If it just falls in the place, then I'll just finger is like, okay, All right, so what you want to do once. While well, you can read your directions, but once you've taped down your cubit, use your finger string to kind of um, measure the number of fingers in your cubit. Okay. So, did you cut a finger string from here to here? No. Okay, do you have an end of a string somewhere? No. Okay, here, hold on. Do scissors. Here we go. All right. So I'll give you a little piece, and then you'll have to shorten it a bit. It's terrible scissors. Okay. So help each other make your finger. finger. So just take your finger and kind of sneak along. Like go from finger to finger, three finger, and measure how many fingers are in your cubit. If it's like half a finger at the end or something, that's fine. You could have like ten and a half fingers in a cubit or something. So walk around and keep them moving. And like aim directly at somebody so that the absent kids can watch somebody do it.
down the first thing on your paper. How many fingers are in a cubic? Don't mess up. It's okay if you mess up, we'll fix you, don't worry. <laughs> your poor fingers falling apart. <laughs> Maybe you should wrap your finger in the paper. Did you measure? Yes. Okay. How many fingers? Is it like exactly ten or kind of like ten and a little bit? Okay. Raise your hand if you do not know how many fingers are in your cubit. Does anyone have an answer? Why would it be different than ten? Oh, here, yeah, you can just notch your finger. I have 13. I have 12. Okay, mine was nine and one fourth. If your finger is completely falling apart, I'll adjust. Write it on your paper. Don't mess up some. Okay. <laughs> you. You're being filmed. Cool. It's going on YouTube. It is actually. <laughs> Don't listen. But don't. in college, in the science lab, you'll never be able to use white out. They want to see all your mistakes, and you'll get in huge trouble if you white anything or scrub anything out. CBAC, not GMAC. Ah, okay. Oh my God. So how many fingers are in one cubit? So when you write that so fraction, you have to have units in yeah. that fraction. So if you had six. Okay, so if you had six fingers per cubit, then you want to write it this way. Six fingers per one cubit. But you have to keep your units in there. You have to write fingers and you have to write cubits because your units are very important. You won't be able to convert or keep track of what's going on if you don't write out your units. So, does everyone know how many fingers are in a cubit? Six fingers. Anyone have like anything in okay, so you have five fingers on one cubit? So you can see we have this range of like from six or so fingers per cubit to 13 or so fingers per cubit. You can see how this would pose a problem if you're trying to build something, right? Um, big problems, actually. Uh, so now pry up your, um, your cubit and wrap the tape around the end just so it doesn't fray anymore. And then measure one table in cubits. So what you want to do is measure from the very end of the table to the very end of the table uh, in cubits. And maybe uh, if you, say, end up here and you need to use a couple of fingers at the end, because it's not a whole cubit at the end, then go ahead and use a couple of fingers at the end. So you would end up with a table that's like, four cubits and three fingers long or something. So grab your cubit and measure your table. Go. And when you're done, you have to measure the table in fingers. So, like you just have to roll your finger down the table. Um, you 
Everyone with different angles, just start to raise the edge. Perfect, it's four. This is mine. Two. Oh, thank you. Did you have to wheel it on the show? And then he brought it over like he knew it needed to go in there. I know, I couldn't help it. I don't underestimate the way I think it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be Guys, I'm gonna start another video because or else it's gonna be really long and take forever to upload. Yeah, stop for a little.